Hi, I'm Jen. I'm Nat. And this is Culture Chat. Hello, culture. Well, it's February 2017. How y'all been doing? <laughs> After a much needed break to survive the holidays and, you know, that orange demagogue guy. Which, by the way, we haven't survived quite yet, but... <laughs> I don't know what I'm reaching for. Okay. I don't know. A little bit of a little bit of life resembling. <laughs> so we are gonna kick off our return. First of all, hope you guys had a great holiday season. I know it seems like a long time ago, um, but we're back, bringing you some more culture. You know, that's and, what we chat. <laughs> and chat and um, chat. But first, we're gonna go back and like let's recap 2016, the fuck fest that it was. Okay. Yes. In January, sad news. David Bowie died. We would start with some bad news. Yes. That is. After an 18-month battle of cancer, uh, we lost him. And then Alan Rickman also died of cancer. You're going to notice a theme. A lot of people died in 2016. And, and then there was the whole Zika virus. Um, yeah, which, you know, as many know, was something that was very prevalent in, you know, um, South America, so I was going to say South Africa, in South America, um, and then it was noted to have come to America, or to United States of America, I should say, so, and we had to deal with that. Um, I don't know if we still have cases that in the U.S. or what happened with that, to be honest with you, so Google. Yes. February. Yay! Leonardo Woo! DiCaprio finally wins an Oscar! <laughs> And gives I'll a never great, let you go, Jack. Yeah, well, he's never going to let that statue go. <laughs> um, and then made a great um, acceptance speech where he incorporated um, issues with climate change. So it was a very great speech. And yay, Leo! Team DiCaprio. And then, of course, another death. It's not quite so sad, though. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Chief Justice. Uh, was it Chief Justice? No, Rob no, he's not the Chief Justice. Roberts is the Chief Justice. Sorry. But a judge of the Supreme Court, um, Antonin Scalia... Um, to some, sadly, not so much to me, died, passed away. Um, and so began an 11 month protest, I guess, or I don't know what you want to call it, refusal by the uh, Republicans in Congress to allow Barack Obama to do his constitutional duty. Right. I don't understand that whole art. Like, it's the president's job to do this and why you would hold, other than just to be a dick well that's what it was it was political they knew that yeah. they wanted to get a conservative judge and not a more liberal one even though Merrick Garland I mean I don't know either way um you know their their reasoning was the people of tooth the vote in 2016 should have their voice heard my argument is but I made my voice heard in 2012 so right you know, and it, he's still in the presidency, and that's his job is I mean, to fill the bench. Well, he didn't just, and he didn't just steal Obama's nomination. A lot of people like to say that, which he did. He stole, they stole the seat from him, but they actually stole voices from every person who voted for Obama in 2012, which I think is kind yeah. of a bigger deal. But I, yeah. you know. In March, there were suicide bombings in Brussels and a city in Pakistan. That's sad. April, Prince died. Just Which, really hard for us in Minnesota, Minneapolis area. Yeah, I remember exactly where I was. I was at work. I was um, at Buffalo Wild Wings having a lunch drink. I want to go to Buffalo with, Wild Wings. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Uh, I w I was on a on a first date at Buffalo Wild Wings having a drink at the bar with my first date, and the waitress started talking like, "Oh my god." Prince, Prince died. Yeah. And so I had a cork come to me and go, did you know that Prince died? And I was like, what? And we all got on yeah. Google and we were like looking it up and there wasn't any confirmation of it because we found out right away and then, yeah. So that was sad. But a little bright spot in April. Well, no, you, it's your turn. Beyonce released Lemonade. I got hot sauce in my bag, slag. It was, yeah, that whole video was pretty... Or Everything movie, she does, yeah, the whole thing. Um, so thank you, Beyonce, for being our oh, highlight of <laughs> so far of the year. Well, her and Leo bringing it, bringing it home. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, in May, uh, Egypt Air Flight 804 crashed on a trip from Paris to Cairo. That's very sad. I didn't hear anything about it, but it happened. Uh, June, um, Muhammad Ali passed away. Um, 
which was very sad. Um, Finding Dory was released, which is also a really sad movie, but it gets good. It's really good. Um, and of course, Brexit, which we thought nobody could F up the world quite like that. Just you stay tuned. We'll get there. Yeah. But yeah, um, uh, Britain decided to leave the EU, yeah. the European uh, Union. That's, so. And that was a whole clusterfuck. Yeah. Then we come to July, another sad piece of news from Minneapolis. Um, Philando Castile is murdered, <laughs> murdered um, by the police um, after a quote-unquote routine stop. Um, the reason for the stop varies from story to story. Um, Philando was alerting the police that he was, um, licensed to carry and he was reaching for, I guess, his ID at all, and was shot. There was a terrorist act in Nice, France. Uh, it involved, uh, driving a bus into a hugely populated area. But then happy news, Hillary Clinton became the first woman to ever be nominated by a major U.S. presidential party. So God bless you, Hillary Clinton. We still love you. Um, August, the Olympics, which are always a fun time. Um, some great news for um, the U.S. and another for women. Katie Ledecky sets multiple world records. Let me see if I can say this straight. She is the first swimmer to win the 200 I think woman swimmer but to win the 200 400 and 800 meter freestyle in the same Olympics since like 1968 yeah she's amazing and um oh god what is her name uh S Simone Biles yeah I absolutely shout out to Simone Biles absolutely love this gal beautiful uh in in the uh female gym gymnast category um and of course, Usain Bolt ran quick like a bolt, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and September, uh, my favorite event of the year, which I have my thirty second birthday. <laughs> Woo! Happy birthday, Natalie! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> um, my favorite event of the year, which I actually happened to miss. Me, I'm very sad me about too, this. Right? Um, Emmys were awarded to Game of Thrones for uh, largely in the drama category. Uh, several Emmys awarded were. Uh, let's try this again. Several Emmys were awarded to Game of Thrones in the drama category, awards for Veep in uh, comedy, and then the People vs. O.J. Simpson in the limited series category. So uh, shout out to all the people out there that are putting together really great television. As has long been said, we are living in the second golden age of television, and this is stuff to really uh, to celebrate. October. Pussygate. So there's a video of um, presidential nominee at the time, Donald Trump, bragging about sexually assaulting women. Which you think for, like, anybody else that would be like, oh, no, you definitely don't get to be president yeah, anymore. Yeah, no, you brag about right? grabbing people's pussies without yeah. asking them permission. Bye-bye. You brag about committing sexual assault. Um, yeah. You don't get to be president. And but then, we'll get there. Stay tuned. But, but when you're running <laughs> against a woman, I guess. Um, yeah. And then, and, and to that point, um, FBI Director James Comey uh, notified Congress that um, that during this investigation of disgraced, yeah, it was, it was well, it was um, actually Huma Abdeen. Abdeen. Well, 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 what they were they were investigating Anthony Weiner yeah. for sending sexually explicit messages to an underage girl. Yes. But he used to be married, or he's estranged from Puma, who was Hillary Clinton's chair on her committee to be elected. And she also worked with Hillary Clinton in the past. Um, but she, they also went through her emails, you know, basically yeah. all of them. Yeah. And found some, I guess, more emails that were on a their private server. Or, or no, who I didn't had more emails that had been sent from her to the campaign or something. And nothing ever came of them, but they were it was reported to Congress. Yeah. More emails. And this is, a, a, I think, a very sensitive thing because um, there's the question of election tampering. And, 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 you know, there was a question of like, well, if there is incriminating evidence and we don't say anything until after the election, that's going to be called election tampering. Yeah. 
if we say something now and there isn't incriminating evidence, it's called election tampering. Like either way, yeah. Like, it, it, but it was a fucked up situation, and uh, and and her poll, uh, Secretary Clinton's poll numbers dropped, and that was just great. Then, we, then comes November. Um, Start it with happy news. The world was un- well. The country was united by the Chicago Cubs winning the World Series for the first time in a hundred and eight years. Go Cubs! And the seventh game um, was fantastic. It was one of the better games um, or better seventh games in any World Series. It was you know remarkable back and forth. Um, they're playing the Cleveland Indians, who also have a, a – would have been breaking a long record. I'm not exactly positive on theirs, but it was two teams. Whichever had won would have been pretty great for baseball, but the Chicago Cubs really are, I feel like, America's team almost. And just having them win during such other conflict was, was really great for my Twitter feed at least. <laughs> it brought us all together. And then the, Six days later. came the news that uh, shocked the world, I think. It certainly shocked my insides. Uh, and it was the election of Donald Trump as the next president of the United States. Which um, brought in the whole controversy of popular popular elections versus electoral electoral college. Um, after it was all said and done, Hillary Clinton walked away with almost three million votes yep. of all illegal people. Um, Donald Trump actually won the popular vote, and he's going to prove it. He has an investigation going on right now. That's all sarcasm, by the way. Check his Twitter. No, he's got this. He. It's really sad. It's he sad. won hugely. <laughs> okay. uh, hugely. <laughs> bigly. Yeah. Bigly. 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 Yeah. Hillary Clinton's a loser. Yeah. Um. No, and and I, I'm frustrated by this because we had this upset back in 2000, mm-hmm. and you think that we would have done something about what? it after that, and now this has happened, and it's like, okay, but you know what? And I, you know, I get arguments for both of them. However, I think, mm-hmm. I mean, I think my argument against the electoral, I have two of them. One of them is we're using a law that was actually designed. To count slaves. I mean, that's the reason that the Electoral College exists. I mean, those Southerners were afraid they wouldn't have enough of a population to, to, to matter an election, so they're counting slaves. So we're using something so old that it is to count a black person as three-fifths of a person. Right. And the other thing, I think, with that is um, Alexander Hamilton had argued that the purpose of the Electoral College is to be a safeguard mm-hmm. to ensure that the... Donald Trump doesn't win elections. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. That, uh, I forget the exact phrasing, but to ensure that an unqualified person never assumes the seat of the presidency. Because what they were, what their concern was, and this is, I, you know, you can't, def- it was white men concerned that white, really white smart men are worried that other people that were beneath them were going to pick unqualified people. And you can do with what you want with that statement, but it does make sense in the fact that it is supposed to protect people from, from electing somebody in my opinion, like a Donald Trump. But just real quick, my other argument against the Electoral College is it it punish. It seems to punish um, people for wanting to live in the same, to live, to live in the other, to live in the same areas of, like punishes people in California, essentially. People want to live in California. There's a lot of people there and their vote counts for less than the people who live in Wyoming does. Now, granted, we have to give Wyoming an elector, but there it's like every, I did the math and it was like every 550,000, cause there's like 508,000 people that live in Wyoming. So they get every, their mm-hmm. vote costs or their, that's how much it covers. In California, mm-hmm. it's like every 848,000 people. Yeah. So and we really have to figure I think that brings up the census too. Like, like I don't got, want to move like, to Arkansas just to help liberals win <laughs> right. the presidential elections. Yeah. Like, no, I'm not going to Texas. Um, so that happened, and I, we kind of forget what happened the next six weeks. It's <laughs> yeah, days. basically that. Then comes December, and it was like, let's just survive. Let's. We all just started donating money, drinking a lot, yeah, protesting in the street, making our voice heard, sharing stories about how we're not all racist bigots. Mm-hmm. Um, Basically trying to fight against what we knew was going to happen on January 20th. Trying to pretend like maybe it wouldn't happen. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. This, this hopeless attempt to try to, like, celebrate Christmas yeah. and the, holidays. Know, the, the new year and say, 
Fuck you, 2016. Glad you're gone. <laughs> fuck you, 2016. Yeah. And it also began my my okayness was just saying fuck a lot. Like, in, get ready for one of these podcasts. It'll probably happen. Yeah. Um, and and Natalie brought up the subject of all the um, the post testing that was going on in the wake of the election. We are going to do a podcast um, specifically to talk about what the value of that was. And we're also going to do a podcast kind of on Trump the day after or like the, and the weeks yeah. after kind of more getting more into our feel, feelings and more how people were feeling and what was going on. So yeah. that'll be another episode as well. Yeah. So um, please stay tuned to our following episodes. Um, f- uh, that'll pick up on this election matter. And I think, you know, you know, definitely let us know what you want to hear about. 2017 is going to be, might be a tough year. It's going to be a very important year to stay involved, stay awake, pay attention. Um, make sure you're following new sources that you trust, not just ones you agree with. Um, you know, you're, you might hear some news that's uncomfortable to you, or you might hear some truths that are uncomfortable to you that's supposed to. If it's not making you uncomfortable, if it's not making you angry, then you're not paying attention. And we have to remember, um, this is not normal. No. Hashtag this is not normal. Don't get used to it. So, you know, definitely tune into our podcast. Definitely pay attention. But pay attention to what's going on around you. Um, and we'll be here going along with all the news stories of 2017 with you. Um, and so I think with that, maybe we'll say for the last time... Fuck 2016. Until next time, I'm Jen. I'm Nat. And this has been Culture Chat. Bada bing. Bada boom.